Good to have you both with us. Gabriella, to you first. Equity prices are going to continue to go up this year. That's what PTJ said. He's been pretty cautious for as much as I can remember over the last 18 or so months. It is now a time to start transitioning to be more positive? So I think one of the aspects of that uh, positive view he mentioned is the slow grind upwards. And ultimately, we do think it will still be a slow grind. And I think you've already seen the biggest benefit coming from peak interest rates, which was certainly to fuel this initial rally in tech, already up 22 percent, combined with the enthusiasm in cost cutting and the enthusiasm uh, around AI, right? So now the question is, what gets either cyclicals or defensives moving? And they're basically flat year to date. So what you need to see is a little bit more clarity on the macro picture so investors actually have a bit more conviction pivoting one way or the other. And I think there's a lot of uncertainty still around what the macro picture looks like. Ultimately, we do think it tilts more towards the uh, defensive side of the equations. We would expect that to start leading over the next few months. Mm -hmm. But I think it'll get us to the fall before we actually have a little bit more clarity on the macro picture. What do you think, Adam? Something is going on internally in the market that's constructive, according to Paul Tudor Jones. Yeah, I mean, everybody's so negative. Right. I mean, I don't like hearing the bull bear case. As you know, we try to get on the bull case a lot on the program. Where is it? What what are we missing? I I don't love the 0607 analog. Uh, not that I want to disagree with one of the most successful investment minds in the history of the world, but, but because you. what happened after that was, anyway. it was was 08, which was a massive financial crisis. So I guess you just want to copy that for a little bit and then pump the brakes on it. You know, I mean, I, so it's always hard to know what historical period I'm supposed to use for today and say it's like that. Um, I, I think there is something going on underneath. I think some of it we talked about, it's, it's AI. It's, some of it's obviously people's perception about the Fed. Some of it's that the bear case and earnings isn't unfolding so far. Um, some of it is um, the low end consumer. It looks like real reasons it's going to be more robust for longer and maybe not a typical recession where unemployment rockets up. So I think there's some real reasons the market's done better and definitely sentiment and positioning start of the year. You know, every single big firm was negative. So I think that part to go contrary and make sense. I think can, from, can it continue? Yeah. Can it continue? I, I, I think it can continue. Um, I have no idea about on a one month view. I mean, you know, you saw my note from this week that. You know, a lot of stuff is just not helpful for predicting one-month views, and we get on here and we talk about breadth and bull bear and yeah, forget open one market. Month. I, don't think he's ta- I don't think he's talking but I think about if you one look, month. But I think if you look out 6, 12 months and you believe 25 earnings are above 2024 and you believe 24 are above 2023, then the market's going to be fine. And you'll get your long-term 6% per annum return from the equity market. And I think that's a reasonable base case to start with and then pivot from. Let's take the next seven months because, as I, as I said, everybody seemingly – is negative. And when somebody like Paul Tudor Jones comes out and is positive, you're like, oh, wow, okay. I can think of listening to him a credible, a, a credible bull case that others have tried to make, but they've been drowned out. They've been drowned out. Scott, could I make an interesting case of where we are excited about equities, where perhaps it's not a slow grind kind of story, and actually maybe do the parallel with 2003, 2007, which is outside the U.S.? And that's one area that we see garnering a lot of inflows, but starting from an extremely low base, where the average investor is overweight the U.S. by 10 percentage points. Now, we've already started to see this play out in spades in Europe, which has outperformed 20 percentage points Mm -hmm. since October. Um, But can we make the argument for what can kind of repeat that performance going forward? And we would argue it's China and emerging markets. And ultimately, I think this big positive shock of China's reopening and its pendulum shift towards the pro-growth side, it's been expressed so far indirectly through Europe and European luxury, not quite yet in China and through emerging markets, which is actually a bit down year to date, surprisingly. And we think if we get a turnaround in Chinese confidence, if we see some better second quarter data out of China, we'll get that tomorrow. EM can be that next leg that shoots higher, just like Europe did over the last seven months.